All right, so the first couple sessions this morning have been a lot of foundational stuff. Um, this, this session we're going to be covering um, some more, again, this is like a lot of the, the overall, the overarching strategy of, of your business and your company and how you're structuring things. And that's what a lot of today is about, is the, with the Ignite, is like creating the right foundation so you can build a really profitable, really big company. And so this is kind of the next, um, the next piece in that, in that whole equation. It's a concept I call the value ladder. Who here's ever heard me talk about value ladder stuff before? Good, good, cool. So this stuff, this is, um, this is probably one of the most important things if you want to take your company from, from making a little bit of money to making a lot of money. Um, one, of the other, uh, one of the other titles we kind of have for this, uh, for this session is uh, how to outspend your competitors. Because that's really the purpose of everything we're talking about here. Okay. If I'm going head-to-head -head with somebody else, the person who can spend the most amount of money to acquire a customer is always going to win. Right? For example, I look at um, our, uh, our supplement right now. Like our biggest com if you look at like, who our biggest competitor is, it's a, comp it's a, it's a drug called Lyrica. Anyone here heard of Lyrica? You see them all over the TV, right? Now, Lyrica's got billions of dollars in ad money they get from, from whatever, and I can't compete with them on TV. Like they're just thrashing us on TV because I can't spend as much to acquire customers as them. Like it's impossible. They, they just burn through money. And so we go online and we build a sales funnel where we can beat them. And we are beating them online in every single channel uh, because they, they're, not, they're not coming after those channels. But all of your business is always looking like, who are your competitors? Who are those people? And you have to create a business that you can spend more money to acquire a customer than them. And if you can do that, you're going to win every single time. Doesn't matter if their product's better, doesn't matter if their customer service is better, doesn't matter anything. If you can spend more to acquire a customer, you will always win. Now, hopefully, you'll also spend some of that extra money on good product and customer service. Um, but it, the reality is that it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is, is that. And so the way we do that is we, when we're setting up our company initially and structuring it this way, is we have to understand this concept of the value ladder. So to begin with, um, I want to show you guys an example of this creepy clown. Anyone ever met him before or seen him before? <laughs> Okay. I was trying to find the right picture for this slide, and I typed in uh, Ronald McDonald, and then like one of the suggestions was like creepy clown, and so I clicked on that, and there's all these pictures of like Ronald McDonald killing things, and I was just like, I probably shouldn't put that on my slide. So this is what we got. Um, so McDonald's is obviously a big company, right? And they understand how to advertise. They're on TV everywhere. They're aver they're spending insane amounts of money, and so what they understand better than anyone probably is is the importance of of the stuff I'm talking about. So if you look at their typical sales funnel. This is how it works at McDonald's. Okay? To get you to show up in their drive-through, it costs them on average about $1.91. Is that interesting? Okay? So $1.91 advertising gets you to show up at their, their drive-through window. Now, when you show up at the drive-through window, you, put, you place your first order, you buy a, a hamburger, which hamburger plus tax is $2.09. Okay? So when you look at that, you're like, man, they're kind of, they're not making much money. They're only making 18 cents for every person that goes to the drive-through. Not that good, right? But McDonald's is a smart company. So this person comes in, they spend all this money, they acquired a customer, the person's there, now they're coming back and saying, hey, do you, wanna, do you want fries with that? Do you want a Coke with that? They upsell them everything. And anything else they sell at that point is all just free money. Right? Because they already broke even up here. They made a little bit of a profit up here. But the real money is when they offer fries and a Coke for $1.77 because from that, $1.32 is pure profit to their bottom line. If you look at that, that's eight times as much money from the upsell. So without that upsell, they're, they're nothing. But the second they add that upsell in, they become McDonald's. Okay? And so for all of us, we have to understand that and look at our business and look at, look at how we can create that. So we're going to kind of walk through the process. Um, so you look at your, what we're trying to build out here over the next three days, you guys, is something that looks kind of like this. We're going to talk, oh, here's all the traffic, right? We're going to talk about that to, uh, in the next session. But right here, this is my initial funnel. Okay? And the entire goal of my initial funnel is not to make any money whatsoever. If I do, that's awesome. Okay, if I make 18 cents like McDonald's did, that's awesome. But that's not my goal. My only goal is to, make, is to at least break even on this initial funnel. If I break even on this initial funnel, like I told you guys earlier, this is a million dollar year business or more. But that's got to be our number one focus. Because after they've gone through and they've broken even on this front end funnel, now I've got a customer. I got the dude who just ordered the hamburger. All I have to do now is offer fries and a Coke, and boom, I start making money. Okay, for us, our fries and our Coke is our continuity, our high ticket, and our other offers we're going to sell. Because the second thing we sell them is 100% profit. Okay? For example, a lot of you guys have seen our, our sales funnel for this book, right? So this is a free book we give away, and we'll talk a lot about this strategy, but we give away this book for free. We have two other upsells. Uh, we have a $200 upsell and a $300 upsell. 
And for average, for every free book we give away, you look at the upsell process, we make about $40 in profit. Okay? Now, a lot of people are like, sweet, you made $40 for every book you gave away. But the way I look at it is a little different. I look at it, I can spend, I can spend $40 to give away a book. If I can spend $40 to give away a book, I broke even. My wife's like, why you're breaking even? That doesn't help me pay the bills. Okay? But I understand what McDonald's understands, is that if I can break even, everything else is just profit. Okay? And so that's, that's got to be the goal of, of all you guys, is we need to create an initial funnel with the, the sole purpose of breaking even, and after that, it's just pure profit. Now, the cool thing is this book right now, where it's costing us $20 to give away, on average, $20 to give away on, on Facebook. So we are making a profit on the front end of this, okay? which is awesome. But I can also go out to affiliates, and we'll talk about this strategy ne uh, in the next session. Now, I could pay an affiliate and say, I'll pay you $20 to give away my book, or I'll pay you $30 to give away my book, or $40 or $50, and I can, I can lose money giving this away if I've got this back and stuff in place. Okay? Back when we had our big call center with 60 salespeople, our entire business model was we would give away free DVDs, and we would pay affiliates $60 to give away a free DVD. You may look at me and say, Russell, you are a moron. Why would you pay someone 60 bucks to give away a free DVD? It's because I understood this process. I understood that after I have that customer, I can make $100,000, $200,000, $500,000 on average from those exact same customers. Okay? Uh, the very first internet marketing event I was ever at, there was this guy named Mike Lippman that was speaking at. Anyone here ever seen Mike Lippman or met him? Or He wrote a book called uh, Conversation with Millionaires. It became a New York Times bestseller. And, and he was on the stage, a super charismatic guy, and he's talking. And, and the one thing I remember him, him saying, he said that, and it, I don't know if everybody else in the room even, even caught or even understood it, but I remember he said, he said, in business, amateurs focus on the front end. And like when he said that, for whatever reason, like it just hit my head and like everything else became quiet around me. And I remember just having that epiphany, just amateurs focus on the front end. I kept saying, amateurs focus on the front end. I kept thinking about that. I was like, man, that's, that's pretty profound. Okay? The real people that are making good, business, good money in this business are focusing on the back end. When you understand, you understand that the entire goal of your first funnel is just to break even, and you have the other things in place to sell, now you've got the, the foundation, the structure you need to build a big business. Okay? All right. So again, whomever can uh, spend the most money to acquire a customer wins. All right, so the way we do this is through a concept I call the value ladder. And that's what it looks like. Now, a couple, a couple things to note on this value ladder. Left-hand side here, we have value. This is how much value we're offering someone. The bottom side is the price. Okay, this little dollar signs across the bottom is like, symbolizes a continuity program where they're paying me all the time. And right up here at the top, this is, this is the best thing I have. Okay? When I look at creating something for somebody, I like to start in the very, very back end. We talked about before, like, who is the customer we want, we want to serve, right? And then where do we want to take them? That's where we want to start. Like, what is the best possible thing you could offer somebody? How, what, how can you serve them at the highest level and help them the most? What is that? Okay? And so, for example, I think the thing that we, ought, that we have that serves some of the highest level is what Robbie sold the other day for a million dollars. Okay, where, I, where Robbie and I fly to the office, I set up your entire funnel, I write the copy, Robbie trains the salespeople, we uh, set up ads, like everything's done for you, and you just walk away with this built-in business. Okay, that's the highest level thing I could, I could offer anybody. So if I just come up to you on the side of the street, it's like, hey, Clint, I got this really cool package, it's a million bucks, you give me a million dollars, I guarantee I'll make you a million bucks. You in? Yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah. Okay, so Clint's going to say no. Why is he going to say no? Because I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just some dude off the side of the street comes up to him, right? I've never provided value to him ever in my entire life. He's not, I've never actually helped him out at all. Okay? So the way this value ladder works is that people, they like to kind of test the waters and like to see if people are, what, what they're getting, right? And so the bottom down here, the value ladder, the value is really, really low and the price is, the price is low, right? And so I offer somebody something initially like that. Okay, good example is this book. Hey, here's a free book from Russell. It's going to show you 100 days of our proven split tests. Try it out. It's free. Just pay five bucks shipping and handling. It's yours. People are like, all right, I'll test it out. They get the book. They flip through it. Excuse me. They're like, man, this is good. This is really good. I'm getting a lot of value from this. What else has Russell got? That's what they think, right? And then they naturally want to ascend up to the next level. Because they receive value at this point. That's how we are as humans. As soon as we receive value, we want more, right? You meet a cute girl. You give her a kiss. You receive some value, you want more, right? You keep pursuing her, it keeps going through this process, right? I've been married for a long time, but I'm pretty sure that's how it all works. Um, it's the same thing in business. If you provide value at one level, people are going to naturally send up to the next thing. And if you provide value at that level, what's going to happen? They're naturally going to send to the next, and to the next, and to the next, okay? All of you guys here are living proof that this concept works, okay? Somewhere along the line, you receive some type of value from me, and you send it to the next thing, and the next, and here you are in Boise, Idaho, hanging out with me, okay? 
It's a, it was all strategically built out, but that's kind of how the value ladder, um, how it works, okay? So a couple examples of this, you can see how they work in the real world, because um, some of you guys have real world businesses, so this might help. Probably about five years ago, um, I just, we had our company going, I hired my first set of employees, maybe it was like seven years ago now, and, uh, and I'd never had a real job before. I'd, work, I'd serve tables during the summers, but I'd never had like a real job before. So I had all these employees, and one day someone's like, so what, what are, what's our benefit package? I was like, what does that mean? Like, you know, benefits were like, you, you give us stuff for free, like dental insurance and health, and I was like, I don't know, how does that normally work? And they're like, well, most bosses give you, give you benefits. I'm like, all right, well, how do, let's figure out how to do benefits. So someone went in and figured out how to get benefits. We had our benefit package, right? And so they gave me this, uh, this dental card. So I never had, I hadn't had dental insurance since I got married because I hadn't had a job. And so also I had this dental insurance. I'm like, awesome, I can get my teeth, I haven't my teeth cleaned from a dentist in like six years. And uh, so I got really excited. And then one day we get this postcard in the mail from, uh, from Willow Creek Dental, which is here locally in Boise. And they're like, hey, come in for a free teeth cleaning. I'm like, I got dental insurance, I got free teeth cleaning, this is gonna be awesome, right? So I call a guy up, we come in for my free teeth cleaning. The dentist is in there cleaning my teeth and uh, he's doing all the stuff the dentists do and then after a while he's like, hey, just curious, do you, um, do you smoke or drink coffee? And I'm like, Wait, what? He's like, yeah, do you smoke or drink coffee? I'm like, no, why, why would you say that? He's like, well, it's kind of awkward now, but like, I just know your teeth are kind of yellow. I'm just curious, you know, I, thought, I assumed you smoked or drank coffee. I was like, my teeth are yellow? Are you kidding me? He's like, you know, they're, 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 I mean, it's not that big a deal, but if, you know, they're definitely yellow. If you want, though, don't worry. Like, I can, um, we have this teeth whitening gel, and these little these things we can fit to your mouth, and I'll put it in, and your teeth can come white again in a couple weeks. I'm like, oh, please, yes, do that. So they did the, they made that little mold. You guys remember how they have that mold? They shove it in your mouth, and you're dragging on it, and you're trying to, like, not die. Pulls the thing out, and, like, makes my little thing, and I'm like, okay, my teeth are, teeth are white. He goes back in there for a little bit, and he's like, so did you, did you ever have braces when you were a kid? I'm like, yeah, I had braces. He's like, yeah, I can tell. I'm like, well, how, how can you tell? He's like, well, people get braces and they have them off for a lot of years. They start, the teeth start crowding back together. They get all jacked and we have to go and you, know, you can kind of tell. I'm like, you can tell my teeth are like shifting back, like all messed up? He's like, well, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm in your mouth. I'm like, what can you do about that? He's like, well, we have these retainers we can put on. You just put them on at night and then your teeth won't shift any, anymore. They'll kind of stay like that. Or we've got this really cool thing called Invisalign where they'll shift them back to the way that they were. I'm like, okay, well, we definitely need to do that because I don't want to get wor like, more ugly than I already am. Like, whatever we can do to like, Get those things. So they go and make me the, the, the retainers, and that's the next thing. And then um, at the end of the thing, I walk out, and, uh, and the lady at the front desk says basically, hey, I'll see you again in six months, and signs me up for the continuity program. So I walked in for my free teeth cleaning, and within 45 minutes to an hour, I walked out with three or $4,000 in bills. Okay? Now, was I upset, do you think, of the situation? No, I got valued every single, I got my free teeth cleaning, I got my whitening trays, I got my retainer, and luckily I didn't need any cosmetic dentistry. If I did, that's, what they, that's their high ticket. That's where they make their big money, right? And I got on a continuity program. Okay, and that's how dentists make their money. And uh, it's pretty cool, except for my wife went in the next week and she sold, got sold on every single one as well. So they made a crap load of money off us. Um, but that's kind of how a value ladder works in a traditional business. Okay, think about the businesses that you interact with each day, and some of them are doing this and some of them aren't doing this. Okay, but the smart ones are doing this every single day. This is an example of of our value ladder. We're rolling out a new, a new version of this next week, and some of you guys will see it. In fact, I'll probably show you guys some of it tomorrow. Um, but the very front end, what we're offering people is a free quiz. Okay, and I'm gonna talk to you guys about the power of pre-framing through quizzes. Uh, we're seeing some crazy numbers with it. But on the front end, we're gonna have a free quiz. Someone will go through that, they'll receive a little bit of value, and they can be like, they want the next thing. Then from there, we're gonna upsell them a free book. Okay, which is right now is our dot-com secrets labs book. In the very near future, it's gonna be our my dot-com secrets book. Julie back here is actually writing uh, my book right now, which is uh, one of the main reasons why we're doing this event. This event is going to become a book, and she's been writing it. And this will be the book that we upsell. It's like, hey, there's this really cool book called Dotcom Secrets, free plus shipping. We ship it out to you. Boom. Okay. And then after they've gone through that, then the next thing is we're going to upsell them on this invisible funnel webinar. Like, hey, you just got this book. I want to invite you to this webinar training. We're going to come in and uh, and train you on this whole process. They're going to come in. They're going to put their credit card in. Um, they're going to go through this training. At the end of it, we'll bill them if they like the webinar. And we'll talk about that strategy tomorrow. But that's the next thing. The end of that webinar, we're going to sell them on the home study course, which is going to be, guess what? The videos of this event. That's why we're making the videos. Okay? The home study course, and after the home study course, we'll upsell them into our inner circle, which is our $25,000 program. And then from there, we'll try to upsell them to the million dollar program. And that's our, our funnel. And then right here, ClickFunnels, which we're launching very, very soon, is our continuity program. Every single person that comes in any step of this funnel, we're going to try to offer them click funnels and get them building their funnels inside of our software. And we'll build them monthly for that. So there's our dot-com secrets value ladder.
So I'll talk about this for, for your business, for other businesses. Because a lot of people, like, they set up a business and they usually have like one piece of this or maybe two pieces of it. They're missing parts of it. And um, a really good example is, is my buddy who's a chiropractor. He, um, uh, he went through this exact same process with me when I was trying to help him like, grow his company. And, and when I first met him, I was like, what, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, well, people come in and we adjust them. I'm like, okay, what do you charge for that? He's like, I charge 50 bucks for an adjustment. I'm like, then what? He's like, well, that's all we do. We bring people in, adjust them, and then they come back the next, you know, two days later, and we just do that until they stop coming in. Like, that's kind of like the chiropractic model, right? Any chiropractors in here? Okay, that's kind of the model, right? The, the, the adjustments were the 90% of chiropractors kind of live and die on, on that model. And so um, one day, um, back, if some of you guys know, like two years ago, two or three years ago, we, um, we built a wrestling team out here, and we, we had a bunch of guys come out. We started training them all, and and uh, doing some really cool stuff with it. And they had a chiropractor who would come in uh, a couple times a week and adjust all the guys on the wrestling team. And one day the chiropractor couldn't come in and all the guys are like in pain. And so uh, this is my buddy Brandon right here. Uh, Brandon's brother Justin was on the team. And Justin's there and he's like, well, everyone's sore. He's like, it doesn't look that hard what chiropractors do. I think I can figure it out. So he opened up YouTube, typed in how to give a chiropractor adjustment. He watched about five minutes of video. He's like, all right, I get it. And he walked over and adjusted everybody on the team. And so Justin calls and tells me that. I start laughing. I'm like, man, this is, this is going to be really fun to call my buddy and make fun of him about. I, this is like something I can tease him about. So I call up my chiropractor buddy. And, and I'm doing this as a friend. And so, so the, there's a, I'm not trying to be mean to him. But I called him up. And I, just, I kind of told him the experience. I was like, dude, this is what Justin just did. And I said, how does it make you feel to know that all of the medical school you went to, he was able to figure out in five minutes on YouTube and do everything that you're currently doing in your practice. And I start laughing, and he gets like pissed, right? He's just like, well, blah, 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 blah. And he starts like kind of trying to get all defensive and all this stuff and you know, all the things he knows they don't know. And I said, I said, I said, Chad, Chad, let's back up really quick. I'm like, I'm not doing this to be a jerk. I kind of mean to be a jerk, but like this is a teaching moment for you. Like I wanna, I wanna share something with you. I was like, when you're in chiropractic school, what other stuff did you learn? He's like, well, I learned how to do nutrition and wellness and this and all these things he started mentioning to me. I was like, when do you ever offer that to your patients? Have you ever, have you ever offered those things to your people? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, do you think somebody that comes in for an adjustment, could they benefit from any of that kind of stuff, any of the other value you have? He's like, yeah. It's like, well, why don't you offer that? He's like, you know what, that's a, that's a good point. You know, I spent six years or however many years that he spent in school to learn this stuff, and he never offered the value he's, that he could give people. Okay? And I think a lot of us are the same way. We come in, and uh, you have something, and there's so much more you could offer somebody, and you know so much more, and you could do so much more, but for whatever reason, you don't. Okay? For Chad, he didn't even think it. It never crossed his mind once. Okay? And for some of you guys, it probably hasn't either. Like, what other value can you provide some? Somebody who just came in your clinic, you just adjust them. How else can you help this person? How else can you serve them? If you start thinking about that, all of a sudden it opens up this whole new world of things on the back end. Okay? And so for him, uh, we came back down and we started trying to figure out some stuff. And he ended up building out a, a wellness program for $5,000 that he sells people to come in. So all of a sudden, what takes, would take, he makes $50 on an adjustment. He would have to have, what, 100, 100 adjustments. If he gets one out of those 100 people to go and buy his wellness program, he doubled his money. One out of 100. You think that's hard to do? If you're a really bad salesman, you get one out of 10. If you're, <laughs> yeah, if you had a flyer on your desk, you should get one out of 100. So, um, boom, all of a sudden you double your money just by offering more value to your clients. Okay, no one's going to be upset. They're all going to be happy. Now, the other side of that is, is the adjustment's kind of like a middle of the value ladder type product. Okay? Some of you guys have products for like $500, and like, that's my product. It's like, okay, that's, that's a good product, but, but, like, but you've got to get somebody to a certain level to be able to have them be willing to spend that much money. Like, what, what do you have on the front end? Like, you need to step down and provide, not provide less value, but provide something that's smaller that's going to get somebody, um, to, get somebody to, to take action faster. So for him, I was like, the hard thing about adjustments is like, it's just not sexy. You, know, like, you think about like a, a medical doctor, like usually you have to go to a medical doctor because you have to, you're going to die. Okay, and then the other side of, then you got chiropractors in the middle, and then you got like the masseuses we go to because it feels really good and we enjoy it, right? And they're kind of in the middle where it's just not, it doesn't really feel good, and you're like, you're not going to die if you don't go, you're just kind of, it hurts, but you're kind of in the middle. I'm like, it's just, it's like the hardest product in the world to sell. I said, we got to figure out something that's, that's sexy that's going to bring people actually in the front door. And so he's developed multiple different things to bring people in the front door. Uh, he's done free massage to get people in the front door. He's done uh, different uh, wellness, it's a bunch of stuff, but something on the front end to bring somebody in and then you can send them up through your value ladder. Does that make sense? Okay. So for all you guys, I want you to think about your business right now. Like, what do you, what do you have right now? Like, what, do you have part of it? Do you have all of it? Like, which piece do you have right now? Which piece do you not have? I promise you that most of you guys are probably doing a little bit and you're missing out on, on the majority of the profits. 
Okay? Here's a couple examples of, um, of people you'd be familiar with, like their, their sales funnels. Okay? Tony Robbins. So anyone ever seen Tony's infomercials on TV? So he has infomercials, he does all this stuff, and he's trying to sell you Ultimate Edge for just a dollar, I think it's a dollar trial, or maybe it's free plus shipping. You come in and you, and you get 30 days with it, and after 30 days, if you like it, he bills you $100 three times in a row. So $300 to get his Ultimate Edge. So that's his front end. Now after you go through that, then the next thing they're trying to upsell you to is his first program called UPW, stands for Unleash the Power Within. That's where you get to come and you get to actually walk on fire with him. Yes, you guys all should go to that as well. That's like his, his, uh, his foundational thing. And uh, he'll get three, four, or 5,000 people in the room three or four times a year. They all come in. You go through a four-day event with him. At the end of day one, you actually walk on fire. It's the coolest experience in the world. You go through everything. And at the end of this event, and you've gone through, got so much value at a pretty low level, 500 bucks to a, to a couple thousand bucks. You get tons of value. And at the end of that, he upsells you on his Master University, which gives you Date with Destiny, a bunch of other things. And depending on what you buy, it's anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000 for that program. Anyone here ever been to Date with Destiny? A couple of you guys, awesome as well. And, uh, and you go to that program, and then from there he upsells you to his live coaching, which is his continuity program, which is 2,500 bucks a month to have a life coach. And then from there he upsells you his platinum program, which is $60,000 a year, and it keeps going on and on and on and on. Okay? And that's how he does it in his business. Uh, Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer, this is how GKIC works. You come in initially on a $50 a month membership, which is their gold program. After you get in, their entire thing they do is try to, to send you to their $250 a month silver program, and then peak performers, which is $6,800 a year, platinum is $25,000, and then titanium is $30,000. Okay? And what's interesting, if you look at, one thing I like when Bill used to run the company that was really interesting is, is that they have people at each of these different tiers, and what's cool is like all of their cold marketing, they're trying to get people to join gold, right? All this traffic, all this stuff to get people into gold. And as soon as you're in gold, you, never, you no longer see all the stuff to get you into gold. All of a sudden they change and all the gold people, they're marketing how to become silver. Okay, does that make sense? So the only, all these people that are already here, they're selling out to the next level. And you get to the next level, they sell you to the next. And so there's all these internal marketing programs happening at each level where their goal is to send you from one to the next to the next to the next. Okay, yesterday in our, in our mastermind group yesterday, I thought it was really cool with uh, Scott and Garrett over here. They've got their software company. They bring people in a free trial. Okay, bottom of the value ladder. Someone goes through it, and, uh, and then they're trying to send somebody to a $30 a month, all the way up to a $300 a month, and they call them on the phone and sell them a $3,000 package. Okay, and they're taking somebody through this exact same value ladder, providing value, and ascending somebody up from, from the bottom to the middle to the top and keep moving them up. Okay? Um, if you have people that are coming in on trials, like having either a call center or an email sequence or something to ascend somebody from this level to the next is one of the biggest things you can do to, to increase your business. Because anybody that goes from here to here, and here to here, there's no new costs. All your cost was in getting somebody in the front door, right? Now that they're there, it's completely free. Okay? You guys will see me when, uh, after you've been in this uh, kind of the black box, this program for about a year, my next goal will be to send you up to 25K group. Okay? And so that'll be, you guys will see the sequences that come out basically saying, hey, if you've enjoyed everything we've done this last year for you, here's the next level, here's the next step, here's the next place you need to be. Okay? It's all about ascending people up. All right? Now the first time I really saw this I saw this, this, uh, this whole concept in, in motion and saw the power of it was when I joined their, their Platinum group. Um, actually, it wasn't Titanium, it was Platinum back then and they added a new group later. But I was at this group, um, I paid $20,000 to be in it, we're in a, group, a groom, with room with all these people, and it was my very first mastermind experience and it was awesome, I had so much fun. I remember when it was my turn to present my business, I showed them, I said, this is my model, I said, I have a free CD, and then I have a, a continuity newsletter and I sell people on a $5,000 back end. And I was so proud of my, my funnel, my value ladder and all this stuff, right? I've shown them off. And I remember after I showed it, one of the guys in the room raised his hands. He's like, well, what do you sell the people that paid, paid $5,000? I'm like, well, nothing. They, they paid $5,000. That's my back end. He's like, Russell, I think you're missing the whole point. So the person that just paid $5,000 to be in the room, that's a $5,000 buyer. That's like the best buyer in the world. He's like, you've got to be selling them the $10,000, then the next the next piece in this value ladder. I was like, that's not like, who would ever, like no one's gonna pay me $10,000, 20, like, I never thought it was, even, it was even possible. And what was interesting is that night, so I just paid $20,000 to be at this event, and that night at the event, true to their word, they did exactly what they told me to do, and they pitched us on a $30,000 uh, thing at that event, and of the 18 people in the room, eight of the 18 people was paid $30,000 for the next thing that he pitched at the event. And I saw it in action, I saw, wow, this whole thing worked. Yep, and the extra $30,000 to join this, uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw the, the movie The Phenomenon that they put out. 
it was a huge flop, but they had people pay 30 grand to be in the phenomenon. And they sold a lot of them. They sold, like I said, eight from our group, and they sold a bunch from the other group, and um, probably made a million bucks just selling that um, to their existing group of buyers. And so it's something you got to start thinking about. It's like when, when you're bringing somebody in, um, and they've proven that they're a buyer, now you have all these internal things to, to ascend them up through the through different levels. One thing Dan Kennedy taught me, said that a buyer is a buyer is a buyer. Somebody who buys something once is going to keep buying things. Okay? Is that, are any of you like that? Okay. <laughs> Simon is definitely like that. Um, yeah, I, I am. Okay? I'm like the worst person. Um, Brent and Susan yell at me all the time because like, I'll get excited about a topic at like 6 o'clock at night and I buy something and then I get excited and I buy everything I can find on that topic. And they come in the next morning like, Russell, you spent $3,000 on all this weird crap. Like, what's going on? I'm like, well, yesterday I was interested in this topic. And they're like, dude, like, you can't just do that. But that's how people work, right? For example, one day, um, uh, this is a couple years ago, we took our team bowling. And, uh, and bowling is like my third favorite sport. I love bowling. It's super fun, right? So we go bowling. And I'm like, I'm not bad. Um, I'm pretty good at bowling. And I'm very competitive at everything I do. And we're bowling, and one guy in our team, in our company, beat me. And the guy's kind of like this cocky kid sometimes, especially when he knows it's going to piss me off. And I was just like, and he beat me in, the, in bowling. And so for that whole rest of the night, he's just making fun of me. And I have my own ball. So he's like, oh, you have your own ball, and you can't even beat me. And I'm just like, oh, I'm so mad, right? And so that night I go home, and I'm at my computer, and I have this pain that's just like in my thing. So I'm pain. I'm trying to figure out like how to become a better bowler so I can call him up and we can go bowling and I can beat him, right? And so the first thing I'm like, well, my ball sucks. It's old, so I need to buy a new ball. And I start reading and I'm like, well, most people is actually, like good bowlers have two balls. There's one ball that's like your set ball and there's one ball that's your strike ball, right? Um, so I'm like, well, I need two balls. So I buy two different balls. And then I was like, I had one of those gloves like the professionals have, but it was an old one. And I was like, well, if I'm going to do it right, I should get like a really good glove. So I buy one of the really good gloves. And then there's a couple like bowling DVDs of these masters, like how to do like the fishtail. And literally within an hour and a half, two hours, I'd bought everything about bowling that I could find at that time. And I was ready to freaking beat this guy the next time we went out. And we never went out. Um, in fact, I don't think, outside of going bowling with my kids on their birthday, I haven't gone bowling back since then. But for that little period of time, I was a buyer in heat, and I was excited, and I wanted to go through this, this thing. Okay? And that's what you're going to find out with your customers, you guys, is they get excited by something, and, they, and if you provide value at one level, they're going to want more, and they're going to want more, and they're going to keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. And so you have to craft and engineer funnels that, um, that bring, in, bring value in and get people excited to keep getting more and more and more from you. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So this... Again, it's kind of what your guys' value ladder looks like. Now, in your books, what page are we on? Okay, on page 22, you can kind of see this, uh, this graph here. And we're going to do like, kind of like a, a little bit of a, I'm going to let you guys work on this for a little bit because this is important. I want everyone to not just conceptually understand, but I want you guys to do it. Now, one of the big things I learned the first um, time I started trying to build my value ladder is I learned that the hardest way to do it is to start at the bottom and work up. Okay, because I was like, Okay, I'm going to build this value ladder. The first thing I need is like something that's low ticket. So what's low ticket that people are going to love? Probably a book, right? I'm like, sweet, that'll be awesome. So I start making this book. Okay, it's been 10 years. I still have not finished my book. That's why I hired Julie to come and write my entire book. It's so hard to write a book, right? And the thing about a book that's hard is, is the perceived value of a book, thanks to Amazon and Barnes & Noble, is tiny, right? The most people pay for a book is 10, 20, 30 bucks maybe for a book. And it's the hardest thing in the world to create. Okay, and so what I did, instead of creating this book, I reverse engineered everything, okay? And this is smart for you guys too. If you start in the back of the value ladder, it'll make your job a billion times easier. Okay, the first step I do is back here. What's, what can I create that's gonna be the, the back end? So if I create that first, everything else will just kind of slide into place. For example, the very first time I did this thing, what I did is I did an event kind of like this, and I set up a camera, and I got on stage and started talking, and I filmed the entire event, and that, the recordings of it became a home study course we sold for $1,000. Okay? It was kind of a middle of the, of the value ladder. Then I took those, that home study course, and I was able to pull out parts of that home study course on certain sections, and I made that more of a middle, like a $30 or $40 product. And I was able to pull out parts of those things and give away as a free plus shipping thing on the front. Okay? You'll understand more of this when we go through the funnels, but, but the easiest way to do it is to, is to go backwards. Okay? The first time I showed someone this, I remember it was someone just like you sitting here in the audience, and that was his big aha. He's like, dude, that's so much better. So like, while we were on break, he went home and he called all of his, or he uh, called all his buddies back home and said, hey, next Monday I'm going to be home. I'm doing, it was a finance guy. He's like, I'm going to be doing a finance workshop at my house. Um, if you can bring you and one of your friends, I'm looking for about 10 people to show up, that'd be awesome. 
So he gets home from our event. The next Monday, he shows up that night. He's got 10 or 12 of his buddies sitting in his house. He set up a flip chart like this, had a camera in the back of the room, and he started teaching. And he taught them for three or four hours everything he knew about finance at the time. He took that recording, and that became his home study course. He took one of the, one of the videos out of the most important thing, made that a front end, and launched a whole business in the day after he got home from our event. Okay? The hard way to do it, you guys, is to write a book and then create an audio program for that book, and then create video, like that way is so much harder. So much easier to start the back end and go forward. Okay, so all you guys have something that you know how to do right now, um, that's part of, you know, that would be your, your typical back end, and I think the, the easiest way to do that is really kind of start there and move forward. Okay, um, I remember um, when I was first getting this business, um, there's a guy named Matt Fury, and he's kind of in the, the martial art wrestling niche, but he's also doing some stuff in the business niche. And so he launched this like mastermind program where you could come uh, three times a year out to Tampa, and then he did, week, he did monthly uh, teleseminars. And so the very first monthly teleseminar I got, and after I signed up, I think it was 1,200 bucks a month I was paying, or 1,000 bucks a month, or something like that. I'm on this first call, and, and he's coaching everybody, and he's talking about um, the value of like doing your own event. So I'm listening to this, this whole thing, and then uh, at the end, he, he does Q&A, right? So the first guy gets on and it's this, uh, this weightlifting coach, this guy named Brooks Kubik. Anyone ever, am I the only one who listens to Brooks? Yes, he's awesome, huh? His stuff is so good. Anyway, this guy named Brooks Kubik is on the call, right? And Brooks has got this book called Dinosaur Strength Training, which is one of my favorite books I've ever read on strength training. It's really, really good. And so Brooks is on the call and Brooks is like, well, hey, Matt, I've got this book and, uh, and I got like, I don't know, 10,000 people bought this book, but like, I don't know what else to sell them. And Matt's like, you know what you should do? You should put on an event for 8,000 bucks where people fly to your house and work out with you in your basement. And Brooke's like, that's a good idea. I bet you some of the people on my list, some of my buyers probably actually would actually do that. So Matt's like, hey, go do it and let me know what happens. And next guy gets on the phone. Next guy's like a runner or something. He's like, hey, um, uh, Matt, this is my business. What I'm doing, like, what do, you, what do you recommend I do? And Matt's like, you know, what you should do, you should go and like put on an event at your house where people can come and they can run your trails with you. Like, that'd be awesome. And you should charge $8,000 for it. And the guy's like, that's a, that's a good idea. And the third guy gets on, third guy's like, hey, Matt, I'm, I'm an author, I wrote this book, like, can't figure out what to do next. And Matt's like, hey, you know what you should do? You should put on an event at your house and charge people eight grand to come there. And after the third guy, I was like, you know what I should do? I should put on my own event and have people come to my own house. Like, that would be, that would be awesome. And so, literally, the next day I got up, I was super excited. And, um, at the time, I had a list of maybe five or 6,000 people. I emailed my list, I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm doing an event at my house. It's gonna be awesome, it's 5,000 bucks. This is how it's gonna work. And I had a PayPal button, and I said, just click on this PayPal button and send me five grand and you come to my house. This is how naive I was, I'm like, I don't know how to even write sales letter at this time. So I send this thing out, and next morning I'm sitting around, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm excited, and like nothing came through and nothing happened. And I was like, oh, that Matt Fury's full of crap. That does not work at all. And so I'm all upset, we go to bed that night. Next morning I wake up, Log in my PayPal account, $10,000 is sitting there. I'm like, you were there, BJ. And I was like, we just got $10,000, you guys. We had like two or three employees at the time. I'm like, I'm like we got $10,000. I was like so excited. Two people had signed up that night. And so then I sent another email out, another email. I think we ended up getting three or four people that, that sent money. I was like just ecstatic. And then all of a sudden I had this feeling of horror come over me. I said, we sold four people. If they show up to this event and there's only four people there, they're all gonna realize that they were the only ones that bought, and that's gonna be really embarrassing. Who here would have that fear too? I was just like, what am I gonna do now? So I'm like, I gotta like, I need some people to be in the room. So I call my friends, I'm like, hey, this is the deal. These four people gave me $5,000 to come hang out with me. Can you come hang out with me too and pretend like you paid money? Because I really need this to look like a lot of people signed up. And they're like, uh, sure, I guess. And I call about 10 of my friends, I got 10 of my friends to show up, and I did my very first workshop, and, uh, and again, this is when I filmed, it became my home study course, it became everything else kind of, kind of branched off of that, okay? Um, and so for you guys, I, I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing the exact same thing, okay? You're all, you all got talents and skills and things you're awesome at, and the fastest way to get out there is when you get home next week, call up a bunch of friends or whoever, you don't have to, even if you don't have anyone to sell to yet, don't worry about it, just get five people, 10 people, whoever people that would wanna know what you know, set up a camera and just record yourself and, uh, and make it all happen. Now, one of the big concerns I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to have, because I get this all the time, is like, well, what kind of camera should I have? What kind of this? And blah, 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 all the, okay, this is hopefully will be like the biggest relief to you. Like, having nice quality stuff is good, okay? That's why we got Brandon here who does an amazing job filming this whole thing, because I want really good quality. But the reality is that's not as important as you would think, okay? For example, Brooks Kubik, the guy that um, I was talking about, um, 
so I bought his book, and then he had these DVDs. It was $50 per DVD of him going out there and, and lifting weights and stuff, right, teaching different things. BJ smirking because, you know, BJ was um, my friend that was here. So I've been talking about these, this guy and all these things forever. And finally, I was making some money, so I'm like, I'm going to order all of Brooks' stuff. I haven't wanted like 10 years to buy it, but it's $50 a DVD, which is a lot of money for me, right? So I finally had some money coming in, so I buy like all six of these DVDs. So I'd spent, what's well, $50 times six? 300 bucks, right? They come on these DVDs, and they showed up, and BJ was at my house, and Garrett, and a couple of my buddies at my house. And I'm like, you guys, I got these DVDs. And I was so excited. I was talking about them. I was like so pumped up. And so they're like, well, let's watch them. Let's see, how, let's see what, like, why are you so excited? Let's watch these things. So I'm like, all right. So we put the first DVD in, we sit on the couch, we push play, and we sit down, and uh, we're all watching, like just waiting and waiting, and the screen's completely black. And all of a sudden you hear, um, you hear this, this woman's voice, and she goes, hey honey, I, I can't see you. And like, look at each other like, what's going on? And then you hear his voice go, you gotta take the lens cap off, hon. <laughs> and then you see him take the lens cap off, and then walk back to the bench, sit down, and lay down, and start doing a bench press. And BJ and Garrett start laughing at me, and they're making, you, you spent 50 bucks on this crap, like, this guy didn't even edit out the beginning where he took the lens cap off. And I was so embarrassed, I was like, oh yeah, I just, yeah I'm, gonna re I'm gonna return, turn them off, and like, so embarrassed, right? So we turned the whole thing off, and they made fun of me for at least another, I don't know, two, three years, how <laughs> many? Like, it just kept going on and on and on. But that night after they left, and my wife went to bed, I was like, all right, let's go see what Brooks has gotta say. Put the DVD in, push play, and the attractive character of Brooks taught me. And for me, it was like the coolest thing in the world. I didn't care what it looked like. It was not what was important to me. What was important to me is Brooks, the attractive character, the guy who I had fallen in love with, the guy who I had listened to, I had read, I had listened, I had, I had, the guy that I idolized, he had information for me, and that's what I wanted. Okay, for you guys, that's the most important thing. That's the whole attractive character stuff. If you have that attractive character stuff, you can do so many mistakes, and it doesn't even matter. So I, I just wanted to tell that story, guys. Again, here's a parable, right? Do you guys see how I'm practicing when I'm preaching? Anyway, so that was a parable to talk about just to help you guys understand the importance that, that quality is really cool and great to have. It's not that important. What's important is you. It's your passion. It's your thing that you got that everybody else wants. Okay, your superpower. That's what people are paying for. They're not paying for Hollywood production. They're paying for you, rock, unedited. I mean, when you look at, like, right now, we are living in the YouTube generation. Like, that's the quality people are expecting. If you can make a YouTube video and you have your passion come through, people will fall in love with you. And that is, that's the key. Okay? That's really the, the key to the whole thing. Um, Brandon, can I make fun of you for a minute? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so. <laughs> so I'm not just picking on you or you. Anyway, I'm picking on everybody here. Okay? So, so Brandon, 10 years ago, was 10 years ago this year? So he's my buddy, uh, we wrestled together at BYU. So 10 years ago, I was kind of running this business. I was so excited about everything that was happening. I was making money. And so I'm talking to him. He's like, I want to make money. I'm like, well, come on up, man. So he drives up from, from Utah to Boise, and we're hanging out. We spent a couple of days and kind of went through like, how to create your own product and stuff. And it was really, really cool. And, uh, and then he goes back home to create his own product. And he took $5,000, and he hired this film crew to come and build this entire uh, DVD of him doing all these bodyweight exercises which was a really cool product, really hot niche. Everything was perfect about it. We spent $5,000. It was 5,000 bucks, right? 25, 100? That's still a lot of money. It was all the money he had at the time, right? And spent it all on this thing. And he does all this work. He's like, hey, my DVD's done. It's awesome. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go market it. He's like, I can't. I'm out of money. I was like, well, that, you should have spent your money on the marketing because that's what makes you money, not on the production of the thing, right? How many of the DVDs, have you, have you made your $2,500 back yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> we will be selling DVDs at the back of the room. It's a really good product. <laughs> but if I'm looking at my business, I've got $5,000 to invest. I'm going to invest a lot less on the production and all of it on marketing. Because guess what makes us the money, you guys? It's the marketing, right? And so anyway, those, that's just some, some stuff to understand to keep you from holding you back from, from that. Because I promise you that's going to hold a lot of you guys back. It's just, it's got to be perfect. got to be perfect. And it doesn't. Okay. When you're doing this attractive character stuff we're talking about, it's you, it's your personality, it's your stories. That's, that's the secret sauce, okay? That's what people are going to pay for, all right? Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to spend a few minutes, and on page 21 and 22, I want you guys to kind of think about a, a couple things. Okay, first thing is whatever business you're in, and this works for any business, okay? I've literally, I've seen people that own pizza shops who have created continuity programs and high-ticket programs selling pizza, Okay? It work, it'll work in any business. You just got to think about it a little bit. So the first thing I want you to ask yourself is in whatever business, whatever, whatever it is you want to do, like what is the highest value that you could possibly provide somebody? Okay? What's the best thing you could do? Okay? 
if, if cost and price was not an issue, it was just the best thing you do, what would that, that thing be? Okay, Dave and I were talking uh, during lunch. And he, do you mind if I share? I think it's awesome. So his, his whole brand is, um, is the backpacking businessman, right? So in the last three years, he's gone to 35 different countries, and he's made insane amounts of money while he's just hanging out, traveling from country to country. Who here would like that kind of lifestyle? And so we've been brainstorming for the last day, like, what's his funnel going to look like? What's the most important thing? And today he came to me at lunch, like, I think I got it. He said, what I want to do is, like, his whole goal for people is to help them become free. Like, help them break the shackles of their job and, and all these things to where you have a lifestyle where you can literally do that and go and travel the world. He said, the best value I could, pro I could ever provide somebody is what if I did a program where we spend a year helping them break all the shackles, helping them replace themselves so they can get free, and then they come and spend a month with me and we backpack around Europe and just have fun. Who here would want to do that? That's exciting, right? How much value is that for somebody? Okay, that's his program. Think about for yourself, like what is the most value you could possibly provide somebody? And that's gonna be your back end. Okay, and then when you're thinking about kind of in the middle, like the way, well, the way I typically do is this. So I start with here at the back end, right? So what is that, what's that thing? So that's the first thing, I think that's one of the questions on here, right? Yeah, how can you best serve your dream client? So I want you to think about that, think about what that is actually gonna be. And I'm going to have a couple of you guys share your thing afterwards. So if you, if you think it's something really good, I want you guys to come up and share. So that's the first thing. Um, second thing, I want to think about the front end, like, like the bait. Like what do you have that can get somebody in? Okay, now obviously there's going to be like middle level stuff. But my main thing I want to know is like what's your front end going to be and then what's the bait that's going to get somebody the initial, their initial excuse me, foot in the door. Um, and then the next thing is what do you have monthly that you can provide somebody from a continuity standpoint? Continuity. Okay, a couple other a couple other ways to help help uh, help you cheat on this. If continuity programs, there's a lot of ways to do continuity, but the best continuity program you guys can possibly have is not going to be like a membership site where you get more information. Those things are good, but the problem is like when somebody's bills start coming up and they and some issue comes, the first thing they cancel is their membership sites. They're just they're just content. Okay, so you're always constantly adding fuel, adding fuel. I mean, I've run insane amounts of a membership, you know, information product and membership sites, and it's not very sticky. It's hard to keep somebody in. The best type of continuity in the world is software. Okay, look at Garrett, look at Scott, look what these guys are doing. Like, they've got tons of people paying a monthly for software because there's a huge pain of disconnect. I would recommend for any of you guys that, any, that want continuity, think about how you can create some kind of software product to, um, to tie somebody into. Okay, it's the best thing. Now, the reality is if you guys create your software right, maybe we'll do a whole training on that sometime, but um, you can create really good software programs for a couple hundred bucks. Like literally two or three hundred dollars, you can create a program that you can then sell for 50 bucks a month. Okay, like literally, I'm not even joking you. Like that's, um, the key is it's got to be something simple that, that solves one, one big hurdle, one big task, one big issue that people are having. And you can hire someone in Romania or India for, for a lot less than you'd ever dream is even possible to create that product. Okay, and you can build big expensive programs too, but, but that's not what we're about here. About like what's the one thing I can do to really change somebody, okay? So if you can think of some kind of software for your business, I, I would look at that for sure. Um, all right, now the other, the other big, big hint I wanna give you guys, I shared this yesterday in the mastermind. When you're dealing with your, with your clients, there's, there's two type of things, right? There's things that they, uh, that they need, and there's things that they want, okay? Now I'm going to tell you guys, the biggest problem that almost every entrepreneur has when they get started in this business is when they're trying to create, like, what am I going to sell, what am I going to do for things, they, they come to me and they're like, hey, Russell, this is exactly what my people need. They need me to show them this and this and this and this and this. It's exactly what they need. Okay, if you just said that, and listen to your words, if you said this is exactly what they need, that is not a good front-end product. Okay? Never, ever, 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 ever sell on the front-end what they need. They will never buy it. That's what's screwed about humans, screwed up about humans. We never buy what we need, we always buy what we want. Okay, I think I've had three people in, this, in the last two days who were in the, the health and fitness market, they're like, I don't want to give any kind of fad diet, any kind of crap. I want to give people a, a certified plan to get healthy. Nobody wants a certified, they, they need that, you're right, they need to eat less. They really do need to eat less. They really do need to exercise more, they need it. But guess what, nobody wants that, what do they want? Okay, they want the fad diet. So you've got to create some kind of fad diet to get them in the door, and after they've come in the front door, then you can give them exactly what they need, but you have to create what they want, or else you're never going to make any money. Does that make sense? So what we look at, I always create on the front end is what they want, and on the back end is what they need. Okay? I think that what every one of my customers need is an experience like this where you can learn the entire system. If I was to sell this on the front end, nobody would ever buy it. Is that weird? 
Okay? But I give you one little thing. I figure out what's the, the one thing that's the best in this entire system. I pull that one thing and I pull right here, and boom, I get people in the front door. And then after in the front door, I can sell them exactly what they need. But they will not buy what they need first. Okay? It's the key. And so what I would look at is, first thing we're doing is we're developing your back-end program. So your back-end program is what do they need? They need to come hang out with me for three days or for a month or for whatever, you know, whatever the thing is going to be. And this is where I'm going to provide and what we're going to do. And this is all the areas we're going to help them with their, with their health, their fitness, all the stuff that they need, right? That's what this is going to be. And then from there, you look at all these things right here. And you got to figure out, like, what's the sexiest thing of all of these? What's the one thing? Okay, one of my biggest ahas over the last six months is this concept, the one thing. What's the one thing? Okay? Every time I create an offer, and I think we'll talk a lot about this tomorrow, every time I create an offer, though, where it's like, you're going to get this and this, as soon as I have the and, it becomes two things and conversions drop. Okay? You don't want to ever sell two things on the front end. You want one thing. What's the one most sexy, most exciting thing in the world? That one thing is what you want to be focusing on. Can we go to our sales scripts? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pound this into your guys' heads tomorrow, or I think Saturday on the sales scripts, is that the worst thing you do in selling is like, is talking about, you're going to get this and this and this, all this kind of stuff. It's all about like, what's the one, the one core thing that they want the very, 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 very most. Okay? Um, and that is what's going to be over here. So for me, when I was creating our, our, our funnel for this, the one thing people want the most, they don't want me to teach them how to do split testing. Okay, that's what they need. <laughs> they need it bad. Nobody wants it. What do they want? They want me just to give them all my best stuff. Here's 108 of my best tests. Just copy them. Sweet, that's exactly what I, want. I just want to copy you. I don't want to think. I don't want to try. I just want to do it. Okay, give them what they want. After they're in the funnel, I sell them an event like this, which is what they need. Does that make sense? Okay, this, I find the one piece that's sexiest. Um, let me look at a couple other businesses. Um, and here's my network marketing front end. So, in network marketing, guess what people want? Or network marketers, what do you guys all want? Digital. Well, most of they want, they want leads and they want cash, right? So, here's my front end for my network marketing funnel. How I generated 4,000 or 7,489 paid members in my primary opportunity in just 45 days. Who here thinks that's what network marketers want? If I came to you and said, "Hey, I can show you got 7,400 paid members in 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 uh, 45 days. You want in? Yeah, I want in. Boom! I give them that. This is what they want. They're in the door. And I can sell them what they need. Okay. Um, let's see. Our weight loss thing. Okay. This is our weight loss offer. The skinny bean diet. Okay. This is our fad diet. I believe in it, the concept, so I don't have any issues with it, but I, but I pulled out the one sexy thing, and it's this chocolate drink you drink that makes you lose weight. Okay, the one thing. And then they come in, we sell them all sorts of stuff on the, on the back of it, but what's the one, the one thing? Okay, so think about your business. Like, of all the stuff, you're, of all the pieces you're going you're gonna to have, what's the sexiest thing? Um, yesterday in the mastermind group, um, we did this... Um, we did this, and uh, which a lot, I always blank out on your, your pen name from the stage. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Shiloh. Um, on her, uh, her business, we went through this exercise, and we said, what do you want to build? And she mapped out all the different pieces. Here's all the stuff I want to teach. Remember I said, I was like, okay, all that stuff is awesome. That's what they need, not what they want. And then from that thing, there's all these elements. I'm going to teach people how I lost weight, you know, how I, how I, uh, how I get more energy, how I did this. And then one of the things she said, she's like, one thing I'm teach is how I lost, uh, what's the numbers, 18, 15 pounds in eight weeks after she had her baby by, without doing exercise or anything, just by drinking this, this drink. And that was one of these, these things she kind of threw out there. And then everyone in the group were like, what's the sexiest thing? Every one of us said the exact same like, boom, that's it. That's the one that's the hot button. That's the sexiest thing. And so right now she's taking that one piece out, boom, make it at the front end, and everything else goes through. Does that make sense, you guys? Okay, so what I want you guys to do right now, we're going to spend probably 10 minutes on this, is I want you guys thinking about this, like what's, what's your, your back end thing? What's the most value you can provide somebody? What do your customers actually need to give them the, biz, the biggest transformation? Okay, that's your back end. And the second thing is of those things, what's the sexiest thing I can bring out for my bait? What do they actually want the most? And then the third thing is what can I offer them on a monthly basis that's going to keep them coming back for more? The membership side, is it software, is it, what, what can I create that's going to be, give me that residual income? Okay, any questions about that? So, uh, so that's the plan, you guys. So again, we're going to spend about 10 minutes. I want you guys to map this out. After you're done, I want to get maybe three of you guys who are willing to, uh, we'll have a microphone, just come up and share basically those three things like, <clears throat> my back end thing is going to be this, 
my bait on the front end, my one thing is going to be this, and this is what my continuity is going to be. It won't take more than like 30, 45 seconds for you to kind of explain it, but I want to make sure you guys are doing it. So let's spend 10 minutes doing that right now. So John, can you start some music, and then we will come back in 10 minutes. Okay, so before we, before we start sharing, what I want to, um, I want to, this exercise that you guys have kind of gone through, um, whenever like I'm in that spot in my business where it's like, oh crap, I got to figure something out or else I'm screwed, which has happened at least four times. It's like, if I don't figure something out in the next like 20 minutes, I'm going to go bankrupt. Like, we got to figure out something now. This is the exercise I literally do. So I'm going to walk you through the first time it happened. Um, somebody asked me earlier, like, when do you start hiring people? So let me tell you what not to do, um, and then promise me you won't do it. So I started my whole business right, and I was all excited, and nobody knew what I was talking about. My wife was confused. Everyone's like, what is he doing? And it was this weird thing. And then like, all of a sudden, one of my friends, BJ, I'm not sure if he's, he might be out right now, he was like, hey, that's really cool. I'm like, you think it's cool? He's like, yeah, it's cool. I'm like, you want a job? He's like, yeah, I want a job. So he moved out. And then like, he's like, I got this buddy who thinks it's cool too. I'm like, seriously, you want a job? I started hiring all these people just because they thought it was cool. So eventually I had all these employees, right? And none of them knew what they were doing. Um, I didn't know how to manage employees. And literally, I was in one room trying to make money to cover payroll. And they were in the other room just hanging out like, I wish Russell would tell us what to do to make money, but he's too busy making money. And so I was like paying these guys to hang out. It was horrible, right? And I remember, um, it was like the very beginning of December, and I had all these, these payroll issues and all this stuff, and I had no idea how in the world I was going to, I was, literally had no idea how to pay payroll the next day. I'm just like, I don't know what, I was, what I'm going to do. And my wife had me out hanging up Christmas lights. It's freezing cold. I got my ladder out there, and I'm shaking. I have my little thin coat on, and the stapler. I remember the stapler. And I'm stapling up Christmas lights around my house. And you staple like two, and they have to like get off the ladder, move it, climb back up, staple the next one. And it's freezing cold. My fingers are all numb, and I have to... I can't put gloves on because I got this stupid stapler. And I'm out there for hours like stapling stuff. And I'm sick to my stomach. And some of you guys probably felt that before. I was just like sick to my stomach. Like all my friends, I basically need to go in tomorrow and fire them all because I have no money to pay payroll. And Christmas is about to come and, and like I don't, I don't know what to do. And I said a sick feeling. I'm, I'm stapling and stapling for hours and just like dreading going back in because I got to like face the real world again. And I'm listening to some marketing stuff and and, um, and, and I don't know how, an hour, two hours into it, my, my fingers were numb, my brain was numb, I was just like freaking out. And all of a sudden I was like, what if we sold something? Like, what, we, need, we need something big to sell. Like, it's got to be like a Hail Mary, right? I got to throw something out there because we need like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 next week or else, you know, it's, it's, it's over. This whole, this whole thing I've been playing with the last three or four years is gone. And, uh, and all of a sudden I had this like spark of an idea, like, what if we did some stuff? And so, I get back in, I thaw out, you know, thaw out my, my fingers, I call my friends, I'm like, hey, tomorrow meet the office, I've got an idea, and oh, by the way, if this doesn't work, there's no one, <laughs> no one gets paid. And uh, that's always, I'm sure, a great call for those guys to get. So the next day we show up at the office, big old whiteboard, I'm like, this is the deal, guys, we're all screwed, I got no money, I have no idea what to do, but maybe this might work. We need to sell a $5,000 thing and make it awesome. Like, what are we going to sell? I'm like, I don't know. But we got to sell something, it's got to be awesome. And it's like, okay, well, well, let's figure this out. Like, if we were going to make something that's the coolest thing in the world, what would it be? And we sat there for about three hours listening out. Well, if they came to Boise, that'd be cool. Okay, well, let them come to Boise. What else are we going to do? Well, if we, uh, if we set up a website for them, that'd be cool. And we, website. And we started going through every single thing we could, like, just our dream list of everything we could possibly do. And there was nothing off limits. Like, if it was like, Russell will give them a massage for 18 hours straight, write it down. Like, that's something that might be valued. So we sit there and mapped out everything we could dream of that would provide as much value possible for, for these people. And we're looking at it like, man, I'd pay five grand for that. That's awesome. And we're like, well, this is awesome, but there's a lot of things we can't do. Like, yeah, Russell's not going to give 18-hour back massages. Uh, probably not do that. So we kind of started cutting out the things that didn't make sense. And when it was done, we had a really good thing. I said, this is actually something that's, that's really, really good I think we can, we can do. So let's see if we can, we can sell that. So we did a little campaign. We put it out there. Uh, we charged $5,500. And within a week, we had sold uh, 11 people at $5,500 enough to cover payroll, um, kind of launched a whole new division of our company, which is selling more back-end stuff and, and saved everything. And so I can't tell you, that was one of four different times in, our, in my business career that I've been to that spot where I'm just like at the edge and it's like, I don't know what to do. And the best thing to do is what we just did. Figure out what's the most value you can possibly provide somebody and then reverse engineer it from there, then throw it out and see what happens. And so that's what I kind of want to do with that is have you guys sit down and map out like what would be those, those pieces. So who here is willing to share what they wrote down. Awesome, you got one, two, three, four. So let's line up this mic right here so we can get it on, on tape. Well, yeah, so we were brainstorming at lunch, you know, what I do and, you know, and I ended up 
the reason I came up with the idea was because I was talking with a guy one day who was like, man, I wish I could do it. You know, he's an internet marketer. He's probably making somewhere around the same amount of money that I'm making. And he's just kind of scared to travel, but he wants to, he's just like desperately wants to. And he's like, I don't know, maybe in a couple of years, if I figure it out or something like that, I'm like, dude, just get up and go. You know, for me, it's easy. I think a lot of people are scared. And so I said, you know, we were just talking about it at lunch and I was like, what if we went and we just, you know, showed people how I traveled and I was masterminding, you know, you know, we were, we were doing masterminds as we went. Sorry, man. I'm just a little bit distracted by that. Um, and you know, what if we, what if I said, Hey, let's meet us up at, we'll, we'll meet at this city, this city, and this city. And in between you guys can do whatever you want. And, you know, I'll have a liaison to help you travel. And, you know, and then I, so I started to like get a little bit more specific. I was like, well, how many trips do we want to take in the year? You know, your mastermind set up where it's three times in the year, right? So, uh, you know, I started out with three times and I was like, well, what if we took four trips and like the, you know, they were each, w one was one week long, one was two week long, one was three weeks long and one was four weeks long. And the idea was to just, like you said, just kind of ascend and basically, you know, by the end of the year, you'd be ready to take that four week trip and then we can go to the cheapest place on earth or, you know, or go to like Thailand where it's like super cheap to live. And then we could all like mastermind during the month and like travel around and see the, the entire country, uh, you know, and then started out at like $7,000 plus a thousand bucks a month. And then I thought of all of the, you know, like some new software or some really great software that would help their, their business or software that I've already kind of arranged with people who said, yeah, you can give this to your people and then just to make a great value and say for a thousand bucks a month, not only do we have the mastermind, but you're going to get access to my favorite four software tools or something like that. I'm going <coughs> to convince you about that later. And, uh, you know, for click funnels, um, <laughs> and then so, I, you know, I'm still kind of obviously brainstorming the ideas, how much I want to go into and how much, you know, like, do I want to do three weeks or, you know, three different trips or do I want to do four trips? Like, I, I feel like that's a lot for a lot of people, for people, but it's not a lot for me. You know, I, f I feel like, yeah, I'll do four trips in a year, definitely. And I was just thinking maybe like one continent for each trip. So like, you know, the first trip would go somewhere like easy, like Europe. And it's shorter, so it's less expensive. And then, you know, go to North America, then go to uh, South America and maybe go to the marketer's cruise because that makes a lot of sense and kind of combine that trip. And then maybe go to, uh, you know, like I said, that go live in Thailand for like a, a month. So that was like my back end. And then the sexiest thing I could come up with for the front end was uh, originally how I came up with this is like how I traveled to Europe for three months and came back with three times as much money as I left with. I don't know, is that a good hook? Yes, I um, And that was true. In 2010, I, I went to Europe for three months and you know, I just made a bunch of money while I was there. I like hit up a coffee shop for like maybe an average half an hour, an hour every single day. And then I went to New Zealand like the next year and I came back with twice as much money as I had. So every time that I go somewhere, I end up making more money than when I'm actually at home. It's crazy. Uh, maybe I'm just like feeling really good and I'm like in a creative mode or something, but it, it's true every time I leave, you know, it doesn't cost me money to travel, I actually make money while I'm traveling. That's a big selling point too. Like, hey, for each week, I guarantee you make twice on that week that you would if you were staying at home. So might as well come anyway, you'll double your money. You know what I mean? Like that's a sexy <laughs> yeah. hook. You get a vacation plus you double your money, let's go. Yeah, so that's pretty much my idea. I don't know if this if there's feedback, but or whatever, if I'm just sharing, but I think it's it's awesome. Um, I like that hook on the on the front end too. I think it's really sexy. Yeah. Who here wants to go on vacation with him? I get a cut if any of these people. Like I got a drop in a cookie. I'll drop real cookies in here. Whatever it takes. Yeah, we we can trade for click funnels. No big deal. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. All right. Who is next sharing right here? Um, for those of you who don't, I'm in uh, health and wellness, and uh, that is a big niche, a very much needed niche. And for those of you who don't know, is uh, pregnancy is really a dicey thing now. There's a lot of people who have unhealthy babies and autism is going through the roof and so forth. So um, my back end is uh, individual pregnancy coaching, lifestyle genetic testing, and an app that goes with that from preconception all the way through, say, two years. And that would be, you know, whatever you wanted to charge for that. Um, the bait 
would be an ebook uh, entitled 10 Proven Critical Proactive Strategies to Have a Healthy Conception and Produce a Super Baby. Um, my, my one feedback on that would be? Instead of 10, what do you think I would do, you guys? One. The one. What's the one thing you've got to do? Like the one, because 10 is like so much work. People are so lazy right now. Like back, I'm going to talk about this a lot on Saturday, but like our attention spans are so short nowadays. Like I would look at like what's, because 10 things is good, but like what's the, like the one thing? If you just do this one thing, like whatever that one thing, and you can share 10 other ones. Nine other ones wouldn't actually be the product, but like there's this one thing that nobody knows that's the key. Like that's the most important thing. Anyway. Okay. And then the continuity would be a, uh, a monthly webinar uh, to address individual topics and, and get people into that for a, a monthly membership fee. Cool. I would even tie the, if you could tie the monthly thing to like their cycles of their pregnancy, it would be really cool too. So when they sign up, boom, when your baby's, you know, when you first get pregnant or whatever the piece is, that way it's, it's leading them through a very specific thing. And that way you're not doing webinars for the rest of your life either. You can build out two years worth of Right. automated webinars and you know what I mean whatever that is hmm. anyway so, okay. I think it's awesome okay um, the first step of my value ladder is gonna be a free DVD training about video marketing okay, okay. It's, 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 it's just gonna be an, an overview the second step is gonna be the invisible funnel it's gonna be the same information the video marketing thing but it's gonna be detailed and I, I'm gonna sell it for $97 and uh, third um, step is the continu continuity product, and it's going to be the click funnel uh, system or the Empower Network product I already have. And the last one is a one on one training coaching program, which is going to be sold by, for 5000 Cool. Okay, a couple things I want to coach you through. So, the first thing on the front end, how do we make that sexier? So, he says the video coach or video, video marketing. So, right now it's a, it's, a, it's a generic. How do we make it a super hyper specific, tangible thing? I'm going to be talking about the um, benefits about video marketing. That, okay, give me, that, one, give me the number, the one thing. What's the one biggest benefit? For me, it's that you work uh, once, you put a little bit of money once, and the effort is only once, and you get tons of traffic uh, for life. How much money do you put into each one? How much what? How much money do you put in each video? You can put from $5 to $10 Okay. using Fiverr. Okay, so this is, only so, cost. so you see what I'm doing? I'm coaching them on this, so I want you guys to see, things. I promise most of you guys have very generic things right now at the beginning. I want to coach you through this because video marketing is not sexy. Um, and then a bunch of benefits, but video marketing is uh, still not sexy. But for him to say, I'm going to show you a trick where you can make a, a two minute video on your iPhone and spend $10 and make money with that. Like now it's a very tangible, like, I, I got an iPhone, I got five bucks. You know, now it's like, what is that thing? What's the, the one thing, right? The one thing is like the key to this whole thing, you guys. One thing is what gets them to to want to. The, the, so curiosity based, they've got to they've got to pay the free plus shipping to get the. Uh, and it's a residual income. Awesome. Now the next thing I would say is, um, so what you said was interesting. You said that um, the free DVD was one thing. You said that the invisible, the training on the back end is going to be the same thing, but more detailed. That's okay. That that's what it is. But when you're starting to sell that, you you can't. The worst upsell is like is more of the same thing, right? You're like, here's my friend thing, and the episode's like, hey, do you want more of the same thing you just bought? Because they, they, they thought in their mind, like, I just got everything from this, this thing I just bought, right? And you're like, hey, I got more of the same thing, and that's, that it's not gonna convert very high. Now, you can still train on more of the same thing, but you have to position it as it's the next, the next thing, right? So first, I'm gonna teach you this trick with, with, uh, with iPhone and five bucks to, to, uh, to make money. And second one now is like, okay, now you've got this first system on this thing, let me show you the next step of it, right? So the next thing is opposed to... Like syndication, for example? Yeah, syndication, or whatever, whatever the next thing is. I think, I think you can you don't have to change the training at all. It can be exactly the same as what it is now. It's just how you position that training. It's gotta, it can't be more of the same. More of the same never converts well, but the next step converts really, really well. Or how you do it faster, better, things like that. Okay. So anyway, just, just some stuff that I think, because I think a lot of you other guys are probably having similar things. Does that help? Kind of dial it in better? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The, the best value that we can possibly offer to someone, actually I did it last semester, and it's what Coach did for me when I was in college, is, and the name I just wrote down here is the semester of dreams, where we basically, we create alignment between a parent and a child. And so what we find is that parents have this vision for what their kids want to be in the future, what they want their kids to be. And education to a kid sounds like algebra, take your notes, go to bed, show up on time. It's a, it's a big string of orders, so they just do what they have to do to get the grades. 
And the biggest value we can do is have parent and child sit with Coach Baxter and I, and we can align them together with a vision of the future and like bring a true purpose to education. And so once we do that, then we back it up with all the techniques that we teach, you know, how to be planned, how to be organized, how to build a relationship with your teachers, how to build a group, all the things that you need to do really be successful in school now and in the long term, but we do that personally. Um, what I would charge for that, I don't know. I mean, last, last semester I charged five grand. Um, people, people seem pretty happy, and I did it over the phone in Google Hangouts um, to do one session probably in person, and then a follow-up maybe quarterly every two weeks just to check up on their, on their progress would probably be pretty valuable. So probably between somewhere between five and ten grand, I think. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so I actually just launched two two front end hooks. Uh, the first one, which we just did an email drop, literally like during lunchtime, uh -huh. uh, it was called Super Learning: How College Athletes Quadruple Your Learning or Quadruple Their Learning in Half the Time, and um, it's converting. I don't know. Does it sound good to you guys? Okay, cool. And then the next one is uh, Why Johnny Fails But Tommy Succeeds: The Two Elements Schools Don't Teach. Yeah. And so I haven't launched that one, but I just made it. Uh, <laughs> the people I showed it to, they go, why isn't it Susie and, and you know, and I'm like, come on, you know? So, um, yeah, and that's the magical why and power how right there. Uh, and then the, I guess we have, so those are free reports, right? So it's a little bit different than the funnel you have where it's a free book. Those are free reports. We just email you. We just launched a book called I Hate School, How College, uh, College Football Coaches Inspired Students to Become Lifelong Learners. I had that package with the 20 Life Skills audio program, but based on your one thing, uh, I think I'm just going to go book only and free plus shipping. And I was selling the electronic version for 17 bucks, and it's not converting for... I was about to cuss. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just go book only, free plus shipping, and then... Uh, um, in between that, we have a home study course, which is our core product. It's the student GPS system. So I guess what I'm adding is the back end and then the front end. And do those do those names sound good? I, I think they're they're definitely good. Yeah, especially to test initially. Um, yeah, they're very specific. It's good. <laughs> very cool. The one nice thing, you guys, and we'll talk about this more when we do more of the funnel stuff tomorrow. But um, the cool thing is, like, when you when you create this bait, like. The, the goal is like all the stuff back here is going to take time to develop and, ha and have like really, really nice. But the bait, you want to be able to like to change it on the fly really, really easily, right? Because a lot of times like you try something that doesn't work. And so you just want to change that and try the, f and a lot of times we'll try two or three different ways we do the front end. And all of a sudden one of them will work and then all the back end works, okay? And so that's what's, what's kind of cool. And we'll talk a lot about tomorrow, like how we create these. Like this is something we could create in an hour. You put it out there, see if it works. If it doesn't work, hey, you waste an hour of your time, so try the next one. You try the next one. Where a lot of times we'll go and we'll create this entire huge program and all this stuff and then it doesn't work and you're like, oh, I just wasted like six months of my life, right? We like doing things fast and easy so we can test them and when they work, then we can, we can add more to it. All right, cool. Thank you guys for, for sharing those. Um, I hope that helped get the, the wills in your head. I know a lot of you guys have come with some kind of business. Some of you guys have, have something that's in the middle. Some of you have something back. And I want you to understand that having this full, this full value ladder is what makes this whole thing work, right? Because it comes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the, of the, the presentation, is you've got to be able to, to spend more than your customer or than your competitors. And if you can't, you're never going to win. Okay, the fact that I have a $25,000 back end and we're signing up two people a week right now into that back end gives me the ability to spend a lot of money to drive traffic. Okay, um, that's something you guys all need to think about. Like, if you have these back-end things, you can spend way more money to acquire a customer, and your business is going to grow better and faster and, and, and easier. Okay, all right. So we're going to start shifting a little bit um, from a lot of the, again. All today is about like the foundational stuff. So this should give you guys some some ideas, and we can. Um, purposely in this event, we didn't spend a lot of time like creating your own product. There's, I mean, I could do a whole two or three days just on that, and and uh, this is kind of outside the scope of that. So I don't want to spend a lot of time with that. Um, if you guys need more specific help on those things individually, let us know or let people know that you're working with our, our team. We can help kind of guide you in the right direction here. Uh, more so, I want you guys to understand the conceptual about what these things are. Now you can go back and build your front ends, your upsells, your downsells. And, and uh, I think especially tomorrow after we do all the funnel projects, um, you guys will get even more clear on specifically exactly what each piece is, where it fits, and how, how, it, uh, how it ties together. But what I want us to do for the rest of, of today is I want to kind of shift uh, a little bit um, away from kind of the building of your business to kind of start shifting more to, to some of the traffic stuff, okay? Um, and there's a couple reasons why. Um, one of the reasons is because um, when, I, when, I, when I go to get traffic, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little session right now, then we'll have a break, and then afterwards I'm gonna show you this process. But basically, before I ever start creating any funnel, before I do anything, there's a process I go through that almost guarantees it's gonna be successful every single time. Who would like to see 
a process that guarantees your phone's gonna work almost every single time. Okay? So I want to show you guys that tonight because tomorrow morning we're diving 100% into funnel stuff and I wanted to make sure we had that tonight to kind of wrap you guys' heads around plus to give you the ability when you go back to your hotel room tonight to kind of play with some of this stuff. So we're going to shift, shift gears a little bit, start focusing on traffic.